today I'm looking at the FTN finder which was the last finder produced for the Nikon F uh, from 1968 up to the end of production of the F in 73 and it uses these small button cell batteries these are 625A batteries and they fit in the bottom on this finder uh, on nearly find as the battery cover was on the side, but on this one it's on the bottom. And I always use a aluminium coin to remove these uh, covers because obviously it's softer metal than the cover, so it doesn't mark it. Unfortunately, this one has been marked previously. So you remove the cover. Put in the batteries with the plus side to the top. It does actually tell you that on the uh, battery cover to confirm it. Put the cover back on. Now this is a through the lens metering on this finder. So the light goes through the lens reflected by the mirror up into this finder and in the top of the prisms either side are two CDS cells which measure the light. Now they are sensitive to an EV range of 2 to 17 at a ASA film speed of 100 and the measurement is done a centre weight measurement where 60% of the measurement is taken from the 12mm circle in the centre of the viewfinder. Now they made some changes to the camera to accept this finder because what they added are some extra pins at the front to hold it more securely on the body and those are moved by this lever here and they attach to the bottom of the nameplate so they did make an adjustment on the body for that and what they did was they angled the nameplate slightly inwards at the bottom as you can see on that one this is an earlier body and on that one the nameplate just goes straight down now I will mention as well they did make a, another change to the uh, F body for the finders, well that happened quite early on when they introduced the uh, photomic T finder because the original finders uh, fitted in the bay like this one this is a 64 body and you can see there's metal frame going around at the back as well as the sides uh, but that is not wide enough to accommodate the later finders so on, from 65 onwards they adjusted the finder bay and they removed those metal plates at the back as you can see and say that was in 1965 when they first introduced it they did actually put a red dot in front of the serial number so owners knew it was uh, available acceptable to use the later finders but they only carried, up, carried that on for 1965 and then they stopped and, and went back to normal. So the finder itself, the way it fits to the body, is it connects to the shutter speed dial here. Uh, and on the body itself, get the right body, the body itself is a pin on top of the dial that engages onto the finder. So to put the finder on, you pull in the pushing the lever to open up the lugs and you put the finder uh, over the nameplate and onto the shutter speed and then you can click it finally into place. You see it sits there on the front of the nameplate on the body. So that's the finder fitted. 
got the batteries fitted. Now there's an on-off switch, which is this one here, this metal one. Press that in and it pops up that little button so you can see the red mark, which tells you that the power is on. And if you left it like that, the batteries will drain. Then to switch it off, just push the button back down again and that turns the uh, power off. There is a battery check as well. Uh, on the top of the finder is a representation of what you see through the viewfinder, which is a needle. And when you're pressing this button, the needle moves, and if it moves to the centre or above, then the battery power is OK. You can see these batteries are slightly weak, but uh, are sufficient. Now, I so say when you look through the viewfinder, on this finder, what you see is at the top, you see a similar needle to that with a V and if you adjust the aperture and shutter so the needle is in the middle of the V then that is deemed to be the correct exposure and to the right of that you see a shutter speed which is obviously set on this dial here. And so once you've fitted the finder and you've checked the batteries you need to engage the shutter dial onto the one on the body by just turning it until it's dropped into place like that and then it's turning the dial on the camera body itself so basically say to switch it on just push that button there and it's now measuring light through the finder now to put a lens on You need a lens with a prong, which are these pre-AI lenses, or even AI lenses, or AIS lenses have prongs, or you can fit a prong to later lenses, like AFD lenses and AFS lenses. Uh, so basically as long as the lens has a, an aperture ring, and you've got a lug on it, you can use it with this finder and this camera. So to put the lens on and couple it with the finder, You match the dot to the dot on the body and as you turn the lens the pin at the bottom of the finder engages in the lug or the ears on the lens itself as you can see that's just happened and then to match the maximum aperture on the lens to the finder so it knows how to adjust the exposure correctly you move the aperture ring first fully to the left or anti-clockwise and then fully to the right and as you turn it to the right you'll see this little red line will move and it moves to the actual ap aperture maximum aperture of the lens you see 1.2 is the lowest but as you just go back slightly it moves a little bit because this lens is a 1.4 so that's the finder coupled with the lens correctly so to take a reading you would set a uh, shutter speed or aperture that you would like to, to use and then look through the viewfinder on the top of the finder here and watch the needle and you need to have the needle in the middle like so and then that would be deemed as the correct exposure uh, so you could then cut the shutter and take the shot. Now I say you can use uh, lenses without a lug but they do need to have an aperture ring and uh, let me just show you when you remove the lens as well the best way to remove the lens so you remove the lens and you can see the pin engaging on the lens just pull the lens slightly away from the body first before putting it away now I've got a, a, a 35mm AFD lens now it doesn't have a lug on the top, but you could actually fit one and it would couple correctly with the pin inside there but you can use these lenses, as long as they've got an aperture ring you can't use G lenses, because they haven't got the aperture ring of course uh, but you can use these and use stop down metering on the camera and to do that, first of all what you need to do is press the pin on the finder up you see it puts the 
red line against the 5.6 setting. And you can mount the lens. Obviously it's not going to engage with the meter itself, but what you do is uh, it will act as though it's measuring, no matter what you, you set the aperture to, it will act as though it's measuring at full aperture. But what you have to do is hold down the depth of field preview button and then it stops the lens down to the working aperture, what you've got set, and then you can adjust that accordingly to again adjust the needle correctly so it's in the centre like so and then you would have the correct exposure reading and you could then actually let go of the depth of field preview uh, recompose and obviously you can see through the viewfinder clearer then and uh, take the shot without any other adjustment there's one other thing I nearly forgot to mention. Uh, on the top, you need to set the film speed, what film you've got in use, obviously, which helps calibrate the meter as well. And you do that by adjusting this nailed nut on the top, which you lift up, and then you can turn. You can see I've got it set to 200 ASA speed, but you can adjust that to other speeds, of course. So, there you go, that's a look at the Nikon FTN Finder. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope to catch you soon.